This is uh, a sea mineral product that I make. I make it from offshore seawater here, and then it's super saturated with Himalayan crystal salts. Okay. And then it has all of these biodynamic preparations in it. So, you know, the, like one ounce in two gallons, you would, you know, put it in and let it run for any 20 minutes to an hour to overnight, or if you wanted to do a morning application, you could run it all night and use it in the morning and then restart it and run it all day and, you know, foliar feed your plants or water them in the afternoon. But what happens is, is it gets circulated and circulated over and over. Every molecule of water gets imprinted with the information that's in here. Okay. And the sea, you know, this, the salt in here has got, between the combination of the seawater and the Himalayan salts, has like 94 ionically available minerals. Okay. And when things are in ionic form, they're immediately available. Mm -hmm. So, so the plant doesn't have to do that chemical reduction to make it available right, to the plant. It's right, right there ready for and them. Like, and if you wanted to use minerals in your compost, that's a great thing to do. Either you can get rock dust from the local mines, or there's different. There's a fertilizer around called Planters Two Trace Minerals, which is an ancient seabed that they're mining in Colorado, and they pelletize it and make it as a mineral nutrient for your soil. There's no salt in it. There's no nitrogen. Can we talk about the min mineral depletion of our soils and leading to the the lack of minerals in the food that we're eating? Sure. I don't know if a lot of people are, are okay. really aware of that. Well, agricultural practices you could look at as basically an exploitation of the land. Sure. Okay. Take from the soil. <laughs> you're, you're taking it out. You're plowing, and disking, and you know planting and harvesting. So and they're every, adding nitrogen and, and you're adding nitrogen, and, <laughs> and you're affecting the soil biology and diminishing it. So what? What happens is, through the plowing of the soil and the harvesting of, uh, of the crops, is like the other day in Southampton with all that wind we had, and you saw the dust blowing, and probably was here off a long rain in East Hampton <laughs> also. If you went by uh -huh. there, you saw huge dust clouds. I've heard of that happening yeah. often. And or if you see a rain and you see that muddy water coming mm -hmm. out of the field, that's all like the finest Right. mineral element of the soil getting washed away. Okay. okay, and that happens over time. In a windstorm like that, you could lose 10 tons of soil per acre in a day. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. And I like mean, you're saying, it's the fine particulates. And that's the fine stuff. That's the stuff that's most available mm -hmm. to the plant. I mean, if it can get airborne like that, you know, it's dust. So that, that would be the most available element of the soil for the plant and gets taken away. So through these practices, there is mineral depletion. Mm. And then the use of synthetic fertilizers and chemicals breaks the soil down to just a mineral component. And, and biologically active soil, soil is actually what I would call a colloid. It's also living. It's not it's just It's living, a that's dead right. It's a clump it, of. <laughs> it takes the mineral base and you have microorganisms living on it that have animal characteristics and plants. So a good biodynamic or organic soil has the characteristics of mineral, plant, and animal. Mm -hmm. And it's really like a, a pound of good soil should be 50% mineral, 50% moisture, I mean 25% moisture, and 25% air. So, you know, you can see there's a, you know, it should, be, it should all, it's a lot of porosity. It should almost be like a good moist cake. Mm. And you should see crumb structure in it. And there's a lot of places that have that naturally, but a lot of places that have been overworked through agriculture or if you built a new house on a farm field and there's been a lot of construction and pool building and people driving all over and then heavy equipment. You know, chances are your soil is overly compacted, biologically sure. inactive. Because we're not seeing the uh, industrial agricultural adding uh, compost. They're just adding fertilizer and fertilizer right. and fertilizer. Yeah, it's got to go through their system of applying, you know, small and pelletized <laughs> things and things they could spray. Mm -hmm. So through the years, like, 
a couple hundred years ago, the foods were rich in nutrients and uh, minerals. And then today, I think you had said you'd have to eat um, yeah. a very large amount yeah, of food you, to get the same mineral yeah, the content. Last, the last time that was produced the by the USDA, mm -hmm. it was like you'd have to eat about 40 pounds of spinach today to get mm -hmm. the same amount of minerals and nutrients as you did in 1940. So what your processes are doing are trying to replace years of neglect of the, the soils to put back the, the nutrients to help uh, yes. enhance the plants that we end up eating. <laughs> yes, and when we do that biologically through biological process, mm -hmm. that's... Right, Na yeah. natural, organic, not, you know... Right, but it's, you know, it's biological. I mean, it's, it's, these are all things that arise out of process. And once, once you get the soil biology going, what happens is, is, you know, the plants can get what they need basically out of the air almost. Well, when you say inoculating the soil, it's kind of like you're, you're, it's like a base of, and, and then it, it, it grows upon it. Right. Like it just it yeah, becomes it, living and keeps uh, reproducing those. The I'm not sure how to explain it. The <laughs> microbes, yeah. Like if I took this, like I have these at home, like 300, 12, 1500 gallons. You make up a big batch of this with these different things in it. And once you spray it out, and like I talked about the water, how it imprints the substance on it, and you spray that out. Now it's in the water, so the plants uptake the water? Well, it, it's in the water, and what happens is that each drop goes into the soil, and soil has, I believe it's 28 to 30 percent silica, okay. okay, and silica is where we get our nerve sense system is processed through. So your, your sense of sight, smell, taste, hearing, even touch is all based on silica. Mm -hmm. And you know, we know what the power of silica is by using when we use the computer, right? That's all based on silica. Mm -hmm. So the same thing in, in our soil, the silica can hold a memory. And that's where the information of growth is stored. Like right now, we're in the midwinter crystallization period, and the Earth is being charged by the outer planets, Saturn, Mars, Jupiter, is where the information of growth is going into the Earth when it's in this deeply frozen, crystallized state, and it's getting stored up for the next month, and then comes so it's not a dead winter where nothing's well, happening, things are... The, the earth is more alive in the, in the winter. Hmm. And then what you see in the summer is an, ex, is an expression of the information that it's getting now. And then it, the, the earth, you can say, actually deadens in the summer and spring and expresses its life above ground. So it's got to store up all this energy throughout the winter months in order to... That's Bring right. Forth yeah, the, now we're getting our forces of growth hmm. are coming in from these outer planets because we live in a cosmic environment. And I mean, look here, we live on an island. We know how much the moon affects the tides and we know how much the sun affects people's moods. I mean, when the sun comes out in the Hamptons, you know that something's going on, right? Steve, we're running out of time, but yeah. I just wanted to um, quickly, uh, your website. Um, What's your website address? <laughs> it's naturalscienceorganics.com. Okay, and people can go there and learn a little bit more about um, some of the things that we discussed and a lot more. Yes. We didn't touch on half of what I found on your website. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Okay. So um, thank you very much for coming on the show. You might have to come back again because yeah, we've got I know. a lot we more to discuss. Yeah, a couple more hours of talking <laughs> to do here. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you're thank welcome. You Thanks, Bella. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you.